Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for Teledyne ISCO's May Chromatography Webinar. Today's webinar is focused on analytical to prep, our focused gradient generators and how to use them. This webinar is being led by Jack Silver. Uh, if you have any questions or comments during the webinar, please utilize the chat function within Zoom and all questions will be answered at the end. This webinar is being recorded and will be available for registrants uh, through Teledyne ISCO's YouTube channel later on this week. At this time, I will turn it over to Jack. Hello. <clears throat> if you pardon the expression, we're going to focus on focus gradient generators and how to use them. Uh, there are several different types of focused gradient uh, generators and uh, uh, we're going to describe a few of them. Uh, uh, some of them are focus gradients from zones. Uh, there are accelerated retention windows. And then something new called time on target. We will discuss the uh, application of a focused gradient generator within the ACU prep. In fact, does that affect any and all of these gradient calculators and what to do about them? So what is the problem? Uh, the problem is that the user runs a scouting gradient and they see their peak elute. They run a scouting gradient uh, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, they want to see if their compound is pure. They want to see if, the, uh, if they actually made their compound or if they only have starting material. And you should be able to develop a uh, gradient from this uh, method. Uh, Assuming that the customers uh, use using C, see where the compound dilutes, and then tweak the gradient until they get a run that is good enough. That takes at least a half liter of solvents and 17 minutes for each attempt or they will use the default gradient that might come with their prep system, and that might not have the required resolution or loading capacity, and that will take about, oh, 0.7 uh, to a whole liter of solvent. <clears throat> we waste time, waste solvent, and I will show you how you can do a single scouting run and make an efficient focus gradient that eludes the compound uh, inside of 12 minutes. Um, you're going to have a 12-minute scout and a 17-minute prep run, and it will work the first time. Our needs for preparative gradients include, uh, we want a very efficient purification. The method has to be very easy to develop. We want to use minimum solvent so we don't have to keep retopping the bottles and emptying the waste containers. The method development should need very little solvent or sample, and ideally it should work into your uh, workflow. The first one that I'm going to talk about is something called the zone technique. What we do is we dis, uh, divide the scouting gradient into a number of zones, and each of these zones represents a focused gradient. The uh, paper describing this is uh, listed uh, below, uh, but we divide the scouting gradient into several uh, zones, typically five of them. Each zone is empirically determined uh, with test standards, and all of these techniques uh, that I'm going to uh, describe, you need to use the same column chemistry in prep and analytical. So if you use, say, a uh, ready sub C18 column for your analytical run and you have a water sitting on your prep system, you might not get very good results because the column selectivity is different for those. Yeah, they're both C18, but they're different types of C18. Uh, the advantage of the zone is once you get it set up, it's very easy to use. You just look at the retention time off of a uh, chart, you choose your run and uh, you get a uh, your compound purified. Uh, some of the disadvantages is that the gradient is not optimized for any particular compound. Like for instance, this zone over here has two compounds in it. 
The first peak will elute in the middle of the focused gradient, and uh, the second peak will elute fairly late. Another disadvantage is it takes a bit of time to determine the zones and set them up, and you're going to need to set up five or six methods for each column on the prep system. So each column is going to need a different set of uh, zones over here. Another way of running this experiment is something called accelerated retention windows. Uh, again, the appropriate references are listed down below over here. And you can run several compounds in an analytical scouting run and plot their retention time off of the analytical system uh, as a function of the uh, sample prep, uh, the solvent required to elute the compound. Uh, you then have to correct the uh, preferential scouting gradient for draw volume. You determine this equation, and then you have to determine an additional delay that uh, these orthos here called delta, and you use a focus gradient with a model compound to determine this delta. You can then run your sample and use this equation, uh, C, which is the solvent composition, is equal to MRT, RT is the analytical retention time, plus B plus delta to determine the solvent composition at the center of the focus gradient. Um, each time you get a new column, you have to calculate a new delta. So if you change column sizes, you need to recalculate delta. And delta is particular to a model of a, uh, of a uh, prep system. Uh, calculated gradients are another possibility. Uh, you use an analytical run to determine the dilution, and you know the gradient is going to be delayed. The question is, how much is it delayed? So uh, if we consider on the analytical system, the draw volume and column volume uh, used uh, on the analytical system, we can calculate that this compound here eludes at 85% B. And when we generate a focus gradient centered on that, uh, the compound really elutes uh, very early over here. We can see that we're close. Uh, it's eluting a little after the void, but there's no real resolution here. So we need an additional delay. Uh, this additional delay is a correction factor, or in the accelerated retention window, it's called delta, or it's been also called a mixing volume. When we apply this correction factor uh, to the gradient, We can then get a uh, run that looks very good. The compound eludes at a desired range. So this extra delay gives us uh, improved retention and useful chromatography. Uh, there are a few problems with this. Uh, the first thing is the same mixing volume that I determined for uh, that worked fine for my HPLC system did not apply to a flash C18 column. And since flash chromatography is still chromatography, it follows the same rules as PrEP HPLC, uh, there's something missing over here. The other problem is, <clears throat> how do you determine this mixing volume delay if it's going to change from system to system? Uh, I needed to measure the analytical column volume and the draw uh, volume, and then I had to set the desired retention time for the, uh, the uh, compound. So we came up with a different way of calculating these gradients. Uh, it's called time on target. <clears throat> we actually calibrate the analytical scalp gradient. So the first step is to run a test compound using isocratic conditions on your prep system. And you adjust the conditions so that the compound eludes at whatever time that you want. Using a column with matching chemistry, you run whatever scouting gradient you want and you use the uh, same compound as you used here and uh, the same solvent system and see where the compound elutes. The compound is presumed to elute at the same solvent composition as the isocratic prep run, and so now we can determine very easily 
this uh, apparent gradient delay. Okay, and again, we have a uh, paper uh, reference here. So uh, time on target uh, just requires one more little bit of a calibration. We are running a focus gradient, so we need to measure the dwell and column volume to uh, measure the delay and gradient on that system. And uh, draw volume is measured with a step gradient with a column not installed, and uh, that includes any loops for loading the sample. Prep column volume, you can measure with an iodide or nitrate salt, or you can calculate it. And, and as an example, uh, we have dimethyl yellow. We note the retention time, and using the delay noted from the calibration, determine the elution solvent composition. And uh, it uses a very simple Excel worksheet over here <clears throat> that uh, if you want to use, say, with your flash system, uh, we could supply this worksheet over here. And uh, so on the right side, we have the parameters for the prep system, the column volume, uh, the draw volume, and whatever solvent composition eluded the compound isocratically. For the analytical system, we have the uh, start and end of the scouting gradient, the length of the gradient, and the elution time. These are calculated parameters down below. And then uh, for the calculated gradient, we uh, enter in the retention time, uh, the flow rate we want to use for the prep system, and some other parameters, and we can then calculate a gradient. And this works for C18 flash and prep. <clears throat> Uh, over here, uh, these calculated gradients, it's uh, time on target, only needs one calibration, really. Uh, when we uh, calibrated the compound with methanol, it came out at the desired six minutes, and using the exact same calibration, uh, the exact same uh, spreadsheet, uh, we ran the compound in acetyl nitro. It came out nicely in the middle of the gradient, so you don't need to do a separate calibration for each solvent. Uh, these gradients, uh, you could do an isocratic calibration, and if you want the retention time to be a little bit later at eight minutes, uh, that's 45% B, and using the same analytical uh, run that we used earlier, we take uh, dimethyl yellow and acetyl nitro, and it eludes at the desired retention time, and what this shows is that the uh, extra delay, the mixing volume correction factor, or delta, is nothing more than the time it takes for the compound to elute on the prep system. So in other words, we've eliminated all of these mystery uh, correction factors, and we don't have any of those in the time on target algorithm. Uh, in our system, in peak track, we chose six minutes uh, based on customer feedback. Uh, it, brings the compound out far enough away from the uh, void volume and the initial eluding compounds, yet we can still do a run very quickly. And again, for flash chromatography, C18, you set the retention time on the flash system. I chose six column volumes here. <clears throat> I used the solvent composition to calibrate the analytical gradient. And uh, Teledyne ISCO makes matching analytical and flash C18 columns. They're the same C18 that we use on our PREP HPLC. And we have the part numbers here. And uh, again, uh, we could send that list over to you. Uh, we have 2 by 50 or 4.6 by 150 uh, ReadySep columns, and they match the ReadySep Gold C18 or C18AQ. Uh, it used the same analytical run as uh, we used before. It's a lot faster than C18 TLC plates, and it's a great way of repurposing an old HPLC system. All you need to do is get the retention time off of a scouting gradient. And if you have an old unit gathering dust in your lab, this is a great way of uh, putting that back to use and, uh, and uh, working with your uh, flash uh, system. So in the uh, AccuPrep, uh, we have the focus gradient generator. And uh, the focus gradient generator is a simplified version of the time on target. So we run a fast scouting run. Uh, you touch the peak to purify, and you get an efficient focus gradient, and that's all you need to do. 
when you set up a column, you set up a uh, scouting method. Uh, the initial percent B is usually 0, 5, or 10. You set your focus range, and the system defines the rest of the parameters. Uh, the scouting run has predefined parameters which enable use in the focus gradient generator. You can have uh, several scouting methods for a column based on needs. Uh, any column can act as a scout, so if you don't have a 4.6 millimeter column that works with it, you can still use your prep column and focus a gradient to itself. Zero uh, percent initial is used for an AQ type column, or if you have a premixed solvent system where the user adds five or ten percent B uh, to the water so that uh, mold and other stuff doesn't grow in there. And we use a focus gradient to allow for slight differences in columns, errors in touching the screen. And as I will show you later, some ionizable compounds tend to move around on any of these focus gradient methods. <clears throat> so uh, what you do is you, uh, to actually run it, you select your column and whatever scouting method. A 150 millimeter long column will have a six minute gradient. Other columns of different lengths will be in proportion. And the 4.6 millimeter uh, column runs very well on the uh, AccuPrep because we have a virtual small loop. Uh, since you're making a very small injection after the compound comes off the column, we remove the loop from the system so we eliminate an awful lot of dwell volume and it makes the 4.6 millimeter column run very well. The focus gradient generator will then run your mixture and the completed run will show a focus button. Focus will open another screen that allows you to choose the peak to be purified. And so what you would do is choose your matching col uh, column that is the same chemistry for your, uh, for your final purification. Uh, you drag your finger and choose the peak to be purified and you press the focus in this new screen over here and it will generate a focus gradient for you. Uh, the desired peak should elude at about six minutes. They typically elude in five to eight minutes. And if you use particularly the plus or minus 5% option, uh, it's very nearly an isocratic run and it really increases resolution and loading. And you get a nice gradient uh, very often the very uh, first run, very usually the first run. Uh, here's an example with uh, natural products. We use the pure ion mass spectrometer, so we uh, run the scouting run, calculated the focus gradient, and I used a number of different masses that I saw because I did not know whether all of the masses I saw were the same compounds. Uh, it might have fragmented in different ways, or if I had a mixture of compounds. And it appears that I have all, all of those fragments are associated with this one compound. One touch generated that method. Interestingly enough, uh, it works very well for silica gel too. So we ran our universal test mix, hexane ethyl acetate. We focused on the second peak and it came out within the four to eight minute window. So we have acceptable results. Um, I get some questions about resolution. If you see it during the scouting run, like over here, there's this little shoulder on the side of the peak, the focus gradient will resolve it. So this is very greatly simplified in peak track. We already set the prep retention time to six minutes on a 150 millimeter column. Other columns will scale from that. So if you have a 250 millimeter column, it will elute at 10 minutes. Uh, if you use a you know, 30 millimeter wide column, we set the flow rate. So everything uh, gets set up for you. We assign the column flow rate. Uh, there's no need to measure volumes to tune the focus gradient because, well, Teledyne builds the AccuPrep, so we already know the dwell volume. And we calculate the column volume. And so uh, that works very well for any of the uh, final adjustments. 
we set the parameters for the scouting run. So we already calibrated the gradient slope and the flow rate into the system, and we scaled to the different column sizes. So we take care of all of the work for you. Uh, there are some limits to any of these calculated gradients, and that includes time on target, accelerated retention window, the zone method. <clears throat> so if your column, if one or the other of your columns is worn out, if uh, analytical or prep, the elution of your compound will be different in depending on which column is worn out. Uh, that causes the retention time to be calculated incorrectly. If you make the scouting gradient too steep, uh, that can affect the calculation. Uh, in the AccuPrep system, we determined the maximum that we could run the gradient, how fast we could run it, and still give you good results without wasting your time. We are going to uh, talk about early eluding compounds, compound chemistry, and sample loading momentarily. So uh, compounds that elude very early, uh, if a compound eludes within this value of uh, the apparent gradient delay, we will generate a gradient that will be uh, potentially uh, not very useful. The compound will elude later than expected. <clears throat> the calculations assume that the compound doesn't elute until the correct percent B, but if a compound elutes at, say, 10 percent B, it's going to start moving down the column, although rather slowly, at 5 percent B. It acts like it elutes earlier, and so we calculate gradient based on the elution time. Compounds that elute very late may also uh, be a bit of an issue. In either case, we say uh, something along the lines that we cannot calculate a useful focus gradient for this compound. <clears throat> so for early eluding compounds, you make a gradient from whatever the scouting run starts at. So if your scouting run starts at 5% B, that's where you start your scouting, your focus gradient, and end at 20% higher than that point. The other thing that one can do is try a C18AQ column since that can start at 0% B. So as an example over here, I have a early eluding compound that happens to be nicotine. <clears throat> uh, up over here, I used a regular C18 column and uh, the compound came out earlier. And so I followed my advice and ran a gradient from 5 to 25% B. The compound came out a little after the void, and so we got some useful chromatography, although it is not great. Using a C18 AQ column, you can see that it eluded a little bit later in the scouting run, uh, but we still could not generate a focus gradient. Uh, we can also see a little bit of resolution from impurities, so uh, running a gradient from 0 to 20% B moved the compound out significantly. It uh, dilutes at about four and a half minutes, and you can see that we have resolution from impurities now. <clears throat> Another question is, I want to purify several compounds at the same time. Uh, <clears throat> how can I do that? The gradient is very nearly isocratic. How far apart can these compounds be? And where should I touch the screen? So uh, going back uh, real quick to the slide over here, uh, we can see that my compounds, uh, if I have a difference of about 1.4 minutes, that corresponds to about 22% B for a, uh, 20, for, for a 150 millimeter column. So the top run, I touched halfway between the compounds, and the bottom run, I touched three quarters of the way. Uh, touching three quarters of the way centered the two peaks a little bit better. Uh, <clears throat> the first peak came out uh, and is starting to touch an early eluding compound, but they both gave acceptable uh, results over here. <clears throat> 
Ionizable compounds may run very poorly in focus gradient, and this is not due to the calculation because any gradient calculation would have these problems. We can make these compounds run correctly with some solvent modifiers. So, <clears throat> if you're running an ionizable compound, an acid or a base, uh, it can convert between two forms. The ionized form, which is more polar and it loops down the column earlier, it moves faster. The unionized form is less polar and retains better on reverse phase. In this uh, case, salicylic acid can uh, have three forms. It could be at low pH, completely unionized. Mm. As you increase the pH, the carboxylic group then uh, ionizes, and finally the phenolic group ionizes. Uh, neutral compounds, uh, they're not really affected very much by solvent modifiers. They might elute just a little bit later because the solvent system's a little more polar, so they retain a little bit more on C18. So, Let's uh, take a look at what uh, happens with a ionizable compound. Over here, we're running quinine. And so in these two here, we have no solvent modifier uh, at all. So uh, the compound dilutes uh, very late. And then when we calculate the focus gradient, it then uh, comes out uh, very early, almost at the void. So that's not very good results. We then repeat the experiment in 0.1% formic acid, and the first thing that one notices is that in the uh, scouting run, the quinine elutes a lot earlier. It's, in, uh, it's a basic alkaloid under acid, so it's now polar, it elutes earlier, and that's reflected in the focus gradient, which is a lot lower uh, solvent composition than without the solvent modifier, and it eludes during the focus gradient. Uh, the question that you might have is, uh, why, why does it elude at eight minutes instead of six minutes? Uh, the other thing to note is if you change the solvent or modify, you will need to run a new scouting run so that we can calculate the focus gradient correctly. <clears throat> Another example is the uh, salicylic acid. Uh, the top again are scouting runs, again, no modifier and with 0.1% uh, formic acid. Uh, it, without solvent modifiers, it did elude, but the peak shape is pretty terrible. And you get hints of that during the scouting run. When we ran it with uh, formic acid, it eluded just a little bit later on the, uh, on the scouting run. And we get good peak shape and good retention uh, on the focused gradient. So you can see that the scouting uh, run might give some clues as to whether it might work very well or not on the focused gradient. So why do ionizable compounds elude at a time other than six minutes? The answer seems to be not enough modifier. Uh, the reason why I put it as not enough is that uh, mostly we run, say, TFA or formic acid and acetic acid, and those acids by themselves are not a buffer. Okay, however, uh, when I say not enough, 0.1% uh, TFA or acetic acid or formic acid is around five millimolar solution. Uh, 50 to 100 milligrams of quinine is about four to eight millimolar during the elution within this band over here. So it can be at the same or a higher concentration than your solvent modifier locally. 0.1% uh, is better than nothing, but the uh, ionizable compound quinine in this case is still in equilibration between the ionized and unionized form. And so it doesn't elude quite at five minutes. So here's 0.1% acetic acid. It ran pretty much the same as earlier with the uh, TFA. Uh, 
I then run the quinine in 100 millimolar ammonium acetate. And the one thing you note is that it eludes later uh, than with acetic acid by itself. When I calculate a focus gradient with 100 millimolar ammonium acetate, I now have the elution at the uh, desired six minutes. Furthermore, the peak is a lot narrower than it was uh, using the acid by itself. So uh, we have improved peak shape, we have the correct retention time. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you need to run a uh, buffer all of the time because uh, with very few exceptions, the 0.1% modifiers work well enough. The compounds still elude on, on the gradient, although there are a few exceptions. Again, uh, note the change in the uh, scouting gradient with the modifier change, and uh, that's uh, pretty important. The uh, next thing that we're going to uh, talk about is how the peak shape is affected by the injection solvent. Uh, this is our universal test mix, and uh, while that's not a focused gradient, uh, it demonstrates the problem very well. Uh, this was a manual injection, and uh, the loop was not washed out before the sample was injected. So we had a strong solvent in the loop, and that washed these compounds down the column and made very poor peak shape. So the moral of the story is flush the loop before the injection, or uh, the same thing could happen if you injected the sample, say, in 100% methanol. Again, you don't you might get bad peak shape. Over here, uh, we have some water-soluble compounds that were injected using uh, DMSO as the uh, injection solvent. Uh, DMSO is, uh, dissolves an awful lot of compounds and it's very convenient. However, if your compound dilutes at less than 50% B, you might get a result such as this. So, if you have to use DMSO, use it as concentrate. You make your sample as concentrated as possible. Uh, if your compound dilutes pretty early on the focus gradient, you can cut that DMSO with a little bit of water, and it will greatly improve the uh, injection uh, of your sample. So again, this is a problem that you might have with any focus gradient method. Uh, Teledyne is sponsoring this, so I have to throw some marketing out over here. Uh, some accessories that make a focused gradient generator more uh, efficient, an uh, auto sampler. You can inject large and small volumes uh, very easily. A column switcher that uh, allows you to run the 4.6 millimeter column and then scale up without changing the columns, and you can save more solvent than samples a 4.6 millimeter column that matches your other columns, and a mass spectrometer. Uh, it verifies which compound you want in the scouting run. Uh, one thing that I did not mention is that with the mass spectrometer, uh, once you see your compound come out on the uh, focused gradient, you can then uh, terminate the rest of that gradient and save even more time in solvent. Uh, yeah, new AccuPrep system, uh, new hardware options include 150 mils a minute, a wide auto sampler that can take more fractions, split sample racks that take large and small vials, the ability to run funnel racks, uh, a large sample load pump for peptides, uh, proteins, and other samples that uh, can only be loaded as a diluted injection, solvent modifier pump, a waste select valve, uh, new AccuPrep features, and if you are lucky enough to already own an AccuPrep, you can get most of these features by a software upgrade. Uh, those include reference chromatograms, and uh, those are very useful because when you use these calculated gradients, you need to make sure your columns aren't worn out, and so you can do an injection periodically and make sure that your retention times are correct and aren't changing. Fraction overlays, so if you have to do multiple injections, you can reduce the number of fraction tubes uh, by putting the same peak into the same uh, tubes. 
uh, six time windows, uh, six mass traces if you have a pure ion mass spectrometer. The sample loop removal that makes uh, working with 4.6 millimeter columns very easy. Uh, if you have an auto sampler, an automatic no injection run so you can wash your columns very easily or wash out modifiers or just generally clean your column. The focus gradient generator, which is a new method to calculate focus gradients from analytical scouting runs. So I thank you for your time. And with that, uh, we can now take questions. Again, if you do have any questions, please utilize the chat function or the Q&A function within Zoom. And while we wait for some questions to come in, I did want to let you know that our June chromatography webinar will take place on June 19th. And the focus of that webinar will be on green solvent solutions for flash chromatography. So be on the lookout for more information on that upcoming webinar. Just give uh, another uh, minute or so uh, for uh, questions over here. Uh, uh, here's one, uh, Jim in Georgia. Uh, the question is, is do I have to use ready set columns to use the focus gradient generator? And the answer to that is no, uh, because we have tested it with other columns and it works very well with that. Uh, here's a question we have. Do you have a way to go from an analytical reverse phase result to a focused gradient on a normal phase flash chromatography column? Uh, that's a very good question. And uh, I could, we've looked at it and it really doesn't work very well. The reason why is, while well, in a gross sense, there is a correlation between the retention on C18 and the retention on uh, silica gel. A late eluding compound on uh, C18 eludes pretty early in nonpolar solvents on silica gel. There are a lot of compounds, uh, such as the parabens that I uh, used earlier. They elude all at the same time on a normal phase column but they elute with very, very different retention times off of a C18. So while there's a very gross correlation, uh, when you get down to uh, within a family of compounds, it starts to break down at that point. We are looking at uh, applying this to uh, flash chromatography, a way of applying this focus gradient generator for normal phase. Uh, but uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, again, uh, we can uh, provide uh, everyone with, uh, with this uh, slide, a, a recording of it. And again, uh, if you want the uh, spreadsheet that we can use to calculate the uh, focus gradients, uh, let us know and we can send that over to you with some instructions as well. Great. Well, I want <clears throat> to thank Jack today for uh, this valuable presentation. Again, this has been recorded and will be available to all attendees um, through Teledyne and ISCO's YouTube page. Um, most likely, you'll see that come up early next week after the holiday weekend. Um, if you have any further questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us through Zoom um, or through just our Teledyne ISCO website, and we can get those answered for you as soon as possible. Thanks so much, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you for your time.